Welcome back to my Spear Guide. I'm Vic Zane, and I'm hoping to help you enjoy your solo PvP in Albion Online. I'm going to do this by helping you master what I consider to be the most fun weapon for solo PvP, the Spear. In this episode, we are going to talk about the spells that the one-handed Spear has. So let's go over the Q, the W, the E and the passive. For your Q, you should always be using the first one, it's called Lunging Strike, and it's essentially a bit like a long-range auto-attack, which does a bit more damage, and gives you a Spear Stack. The Spear Stacks greatly increase auto-attack damage. If you have maximum Spear Stacks, meaning 3, then every auto-attack will do 84% more damage. So instead of hitting 100, you will be hitting well, for 184, which is a pretty big difference. In terms of the mechanics of this Q, one thing you should know is that even when the animation has ended, the area of effect of the Q still lingers. So when someone is chasing you, you don't need to hit them with your Q necessarily, but you can kind of throw it out to where they're going to be in a second and they will still get hit by it. Now for your W, you have a couple of interesting options on the spear. First, if you're just starting out with the spear, I suggest that you completely ignore Forest of Spears, Inner Focus and Harpoon. Forest of Spears is only good for PvE. The inner focus after the rework is not terrible, but gives you less options than some of the better Ws. And Harpoon, you can try to play around with, especially as it is getting buffed a little bit, but this is a spell currently that is very nice in theory to catch um, other players that are trying to kite you, but very difficult to really properly use in a fight and difficult to get enough value out of to justify using it over some other Ws. Now for the Ws that you actually do want to get used to, you have Cripple, Impaler and Deflecting Spin. Let's talk about those. First of all, Cripple. In most PvP situations, specifically in the Mists, this should be your go-to and I suggest that you run around using Cripple. Cripple does four things. Number one, it does an amount of flat damage to your enemy. Number two, it slows them by a little bit. Number three, it removes any move speed buffs from your enemy. And number four, in case you do successfully remove a move speed buff, then it gives you in turn a buff for five seconds where your move, spe move speed is increased by 50% and all the damage you deal is increased by 25%. Not just your auto attacks, but also all your spells, as well as, for example, your stalker jacket. Now, as you can already probably imagine, or maybe have seen in the mists, cripple can be used in many different ways. You can use it to purge your enemy's boots when they're trying to chase you. You can use it to purge their boots when you're trying to chase them. You can use it in order to get the damage buff for your execute or simply to win the trade. Notice that Cripple removes any buff which has a move speed component. So we're not only talking about removing your enemy's boots, but you can also purge the sword's stacks, for example. You can purge the stun run from quarter staffs. You can use it on adrenaline rush from axes. And there's other examples as well. Cripple is a very versatile spell, but it does have a weakness. In order to get the maximum value from it, you really do need to be able to purge your opponent's move speed buff. And good players will know this and try to play around it by making it more difficult for you to actually purge their move speed buffs, for example, spacing you before using their boots or not using their boots at all, which can give your enemy a bit of an advantage since they are trading with uh, auto attacks, Qs and Ws, while you are just trading with auto attacks and Qs, waiting to hopefully use your W at the perfect moment. The second option you have, which is universally pretty good, is the Impaler. This spell is much simpler than Cripple, so if you are still learning the Spear or you find yourself generally a bit overwhelmed in uh, PvP situations, then it might be a good idea to just run Impaler and not think about other options until you feel more comfortable with PvPing on the Spear in general. Impaler does two things. It will damage your enemy and slow them. The slow is fairly decent and the damage is not bad either. In fact, due to its shorter cooldown and higher damage comparing to cripple, if you were to just stand and hit your Ws and do nothing else, you would do about two and a half times more damage per second than you would if you just crippled. 
there are two negatives to impaler. First, it is very one-dimensional, meaning you can just use it to damage and slow your enemy. If your enemy has more mobility than you, then without the threat of cripple, it's going to be easier for them to disengage or take the fight on their own terms. And the second and probably even bigger weakness is that you can miss it. It comes with a delay and it's not targeted at your enemy but at an area. Meaning that in theory you might get two and a half times more damage than you would from Cripple but in reality you're going to miss a lot of Impalers. I personally really like Impaler in matchups where I'm fighting against melee weapons that are trying to kite me. This can be a specific build or just some specific players but Many battle axes, for example, instead of committing, try to just hit ease from far so I can respond by hitting my impalers from the same range. Sometimes carving swords don't want to close the distance but just want to spam their W's. And um, of course also other spears will be a good target for impalers for when they are not interested in closing the gap and are trying to poke at you and chip you from further away. And then we have deflecting spin. This is a very interesting spell that in some specific situations can be immensely valuable. Deflecting spin is a channel, meaning you cannot use other spells, but you can still move around. And it increases your resistances by quite a bit and reflects 100% of the damage done to you back to your opponent. So it's essentially like a better version of the Hunter Hood on a very low cooldown. The low cooldown here is one of the keywords because if you just spam deflecting spin, you will be deflecting for 40% of the time. It is incredibly frustrating to play against this, and in fact, some opponents might just flat up leave the fight if all they see you deflecting constantly. And this is where the weakness of deflecting spin comes in. If they do decide to leave the fight, you have a lot less tools now to actually catch them. You don't have the mobility or slows that you gain from either cripple or impaler and deflecting spin is going to be the most one-dimensional of, of the other w's in that you can only really get value out of it if your opponent is being aggressive onto you and it's much more difficult for you to make an active play when all you have on your w is just a reflect the best way to think about it is that the less mobility your enemy has, the more valuable deflecting spin becomes. And of course, you pretty much just want it for matchups where there is big damage that you can predict and deflect. For example, one-handed fire staff, certain dagger builds like the death givers that might not even run a sprint on their boots and certain crossbow builds and some bows like the war bow as well. So to summarize your W choice, if you're just starting out with spear or you're starting out with PvP in general, go with impaler to have a bit of a simpler time easing into it. Try to use cripple more and more as your default option in order to be able to decide over the spacing of the fight as well as to execute your opponent with the cripple buff and be ready to switch to deflecting spin if you believe that your enemy will do damage to you that you will be able to predict and it is possible to reflect. Now the one-handed spears E is once again a very versatile spell. Number one, it will do damage based on the amount of spear stacks on you. Number two, it is a short stun, so you can use it as an interrupt for your enemy's spell casting. And number three, it is a decent mobility option for the one-handed spear, allowing you to get into a good situation or out of a bad situation. The correct usage for this spell is very situation specific, which gives the spear its flexibility and makes it quite a bit of fun. In some matchups, you will want to keep your E to do the big damage at the end to kill your enemy. In some matchups, you need to hold on to it because without its mobility, you will just simply not be able to catch up to your opponent once they try to kite. And in some matchups, like for example, maybe bolt casters, you will want to keep your E in order to be able to interrupt their E in certain situations. We will touch upon this again in the next episode. But for this one, the final spell you have on your spear is a choice of passives. And here you don't have to think about it at all. Just pick life leech and go with that. No other passive on the spear is anywhere near as useful as life leech 
and in combination with lifesteal food this passive in fact makes the spear into a little bit of a tank in many fights. Hopefully you've gained a bit of new understanding into the spells that the one-handed spear has and in the next and last video of this guide we will talk about the principles on how to approach PvP situations on the one-handed spear to take maximum advantage of these spells. See you there!